Here's what to expect when you run the code in this LabVIEW project. To begin, you'll want an audio source from either your PC or your phone, and then the processed audio will go to either your speakers or your earbuds. If you're wearing earbuds, please protect your hearing and start with very low volume. Here I've opened PC main. And you may or may not encounter a broken run arrow when you go to run this VI. Let's go ahead and click it. It says that the FPGA VI must be recompiled. This is not a problem. Let's look for the FPGA target. Towards the bottom is the build specification. Simply right click on that for FPGA and choose build. We'll go ahead and save that. And now the compiling process begins and about five to six minutes later, you'll be ready to go. All right, at this point, let's go ahead and retry running PC main. And we're off and running. We see that we have got a strip chart recorder showing the processed audio signal. I'm using this tool to develop uh, test tone at particular frequencies, and you can also choose different signal shapes. Let me start by hitting play. I want to make sure that I have the volume turned all the way up on my PC. Let's try dialing in a different frequency. Maybe even 2000 Hertz. And let's make sure that the application is generating the maximum amount of volume available to it. Try some of the different signal shapes, and then I'll leave this with sign. The processing on the PC applies a simple gain change to each one of the audio frames, and this is specified in dB or decibels. You can also play around with the amount of time spent on the PC for processing. This indicator shows you the maximum loop time that's permitted without dropping frames, and then it shows you the actual measured time. Here I'm artificially increasing the loop time, and you'll notice that we start to experience some problems. The PC can no longer keep up with the FPGA, and you'll start to hear some audio artifacts. We see the various overflow indicators are also lighting up. So as long as we keep our minimum loop time below 10 milliseconds, we're okay. Let's reinitialize to the uh, original front panel values or front panel control values, try some other options. Here you can adjust the sampling rate of the FPGA system. So this is a lower sampling rate right now. Here it gives you more processing time available on the PC. Let's try a faster sampling rate of 100 kilosamples per second. Seems to be working uh, reasonably well. Let's try 500 kilosamples per second. Now at this point we can start to see a little visual indicator that we are not quite keeping up with the processing. So we are having some problems with some dropped frames. Let's get this back to 100 kilosamples per second. And then let's, let's leave it at 50 kilosamples per second, the original number. You can also try experimenting with the number of samples per audio frame. So the PC is processing one frame at a time and then sending it back to the FPGA. If we get an excessive number of samples, then it's just too much uh, information for the PC to deal with and it can't keep up. Let's try some a little bit larger values, but just not quite so extreme, say 2000. Well, that's not going to work either. What we really want to do is take a look at the block diagram itself and see what's going on with the size of the FIFOs. That is how much memory is allocated. And in particular, you can, if you choose, adjust this value right here. So the requested depth is, two, is 
uh, 1024. So 2000 is too high, but uh, 1000 ought to work just fine.